All right, so as we come to the end here of this section, the uh, factor the polynomial completely section, let's go ahead and take a look at 44. And I've already written it out to the side here just to save us a little bit of time. And you'll recall that we're always going to go through those two questions that we've been asking for this whole section. Number one, is there a GCF? No, I don't see a GCF. So I'll ask question number two to myself. How many terms are there? Well, one term, two terms. And if we're dealing with two terms, we know we're either going to be looking for the difference of perfect squares or we're dealing with the sum or difference of cubes. Well, let's see. Here's a cube. Here's our cube. So I must be dealing with the sum or difference, and in this case, the difference, right? Because this is subtraction of cubes. And with the sum or difference of cubes, right away, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my set of blank parentheses, this little model I use to help me answer or factor cubes. All right, and we'll put our little acronym SOP out to the side here, same, opposite, positive all right and we'll go ahead and start the process so we know that with this model here this model of blank parentheses whatever the original sign separating our two cube terms was uh, in the original polynomial we're gonna go ahead and bring down and so in this case let's go ahead and bring down that subtraction and now we're gonna start filling in our sets of parentheses and so for this first set of parentheses here in line one we want to ask ourselves what do I have to cube what do I have to cube to get z cubed well I have to cube z don't I all right and what do I have to cube what do I have to cube to get 8p cubed well what number cubed gives me 8 well 2 cubed gives me 8 and what variable cubed gives me p cubed? Well, p cubed gives me p cubed. All right, so now that I filled in line one, and this really is the most difficult line to fill in, you're going to take the information from line one and that's going to help you to fill in line two. So you'll recall that a difference or sum of cubes breaks down when you factor it into a binomial and then into a trinomial. So it breaks down into two separate, really, terms, but each of those, you know, quote unquote terms is going to be a binomial and then a trinomial. So let's go ahead and start filling this in. So for the binomial portion of your answer, all you're going to do is pull down the information from line one. So this first blank of your binomial is going to be whatever is inside the first set of parentheses from line one. So in this case, just a Z. Whatever sign is separating your two uh, initial sets of parentheses also comes down. And then the last uh, blank of your binomial is just whatever was in the last set of parentheses from line one. So in this case, 2P. All right, now that we have our binomial filled in, we're now going to use this information to help us fill in our trinomial. So you'll notice that we have a blank for the first term of the trinomial. And to fill this blank in, all we do is square the first term of the binomial. So what's z squared? Well, z squared is just z squared. To fill the middle term in of the trinomial, we're going to go ahead and multiply these two terms together. So z times 2p is just 2pz or 2zp, right? Doesn't matter what order you multiply in, you're gonna get the same result. And then the last term of the trinomial is simply taking the last term of the binomial and squaring it. So 2p squared, well, that's just going to give us 4p squared, isn't it? So 4p squared. And now you're going to say, well, what about my signs? I don't know what to do with my signs. Well, you're going to use this acronym, this SOP, same, opposite, positive, to help you fill in your signs. Same, the, the, the letter S for same refers to whatever was in your original polynomial is going to follow you down and then follow you down. So we've taken care of the same. And now we're going to fill in the first sign 
and the first sign is going to be opposite of whatever followed you down. So in this case, a minus followed us down, and so we're going to take the opposite of minus, which is a plus, and now the last sign is always a plus in that trinomial, no matter what, for positive. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite just the final answer one more time here. So we have z cubed minus 8p cubed factors out to the binomial z minus 2p times the trinomial z squared plus 2pz plus 4p squared. And there we have number 44. All right, let's take a look here at 45. So we have 27 a cubed minus 125 b cubed. All right, well, let's go ahead and, and ask ourselves that first question. Is there a GCF here with number 45? No, I don't see a GCF. So how about question number two? How many terms are there? Well, one term, two terms. So I need to be looking for the difference of perfect squares or the sum and difference of cubes. This is clearly a sum or difference of cube. <clears throat> excuse me, sum or difference of cubes. And so right away, let's go ahead and set up our set of parentheses, that model that it's going to help us to factor. So this is our binomial and then finally our trinomial. All right, and then you'll recall that just like we did up here, whatever sign was in between the two terms of your original polynomial, go ahead and just bring down. So in this case, we have a subtraction, a minus, so that's just going to come down. All right, now we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to cube to get 27a cubed? Well, let's start with just the number first of all. So what number do I have to cube to get 27? Well, hopefully you said 3, right? 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. And now what letter do I cube? What letter do I cube to get a cubed? Well, just a, right? All right, and now let's take a look here at the second set of parentheses. Let's just deal with our number first. What number do I have to cube to get 125? Well, hopefully you said 5, right? 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. And now what letter do I have to cube to get b cubed? Well, just b, right? And again, if you can figure this line out, if you can solve this line, then in the final line, which is the final answer line, uh, really should be uh, uh, relatively easy to find because you're just using this information. All right, so let's go ahead and, and figure this out. So you'll recall that we break down into a binomial and trinomial, as I said, and to fill in your binomial, all you're going to do is whatever was in the first set of parentheses is going to be the first term of that binomial. So in this case, we just pull our 3a down, we pull our sign down, and then the last term of the binomial is the last uh, set of parentheses here, whatever's inside this last set. So in this case, 5b. All right, so to fill in now our trinomial, we have one, two, three blank spaces. So to fill in this first blank space, all we're going to do is square that first term of the binomial. So what is 3a squared? Well, it's 9a squared, isn't it? And then to fill in the second part of our trinomial, we're going to multiply and we're going to multiply our two terms from the binomial together. So what is 3a times 5b? Well, 15ab, isn't it? And then lastly, to fill in the end term of our trinomial, we're going to again square, except this time now we're going to square the final term of our binomial. So what is 5b squared? Well, 25b squared, isn't it? All right, so let's go ahead and use our same opposite positive acronym to help us fill in the signs. So same refers to whatever was in the original polynomial, follows you down, and then it's going to follow you down. All right, and then opposite refers to whatever is the sign of your binomial, take the opposite of. So we have a minus here, so now we're going to have a plus. 
And then the last sign in your trinomial is always, always plus for positive. All right, so the final answer here, again, we'll just rewrite, is 3a minus 5b times the trinomial 9a squared plus 15ab plus 25b squared. And there we have number 45, the last of this section.